I started in coal mining was the reasons was a good living for my family and uh, good benefits for when I retired and good hospitalization was the, was the main factor and I never thought I'd get black lung. I was always trained to avoid injuries and I should have paid more attention to the dust. In the 1960s, coal miners began to call for protection from the burden of serious health problems and disabling injuries that were the result of mining. Following the tragic explosion at the Farmington No. 9 mine in 1968, the United States Congress passed and President Richard Nixon signed into law the Federal Coal Mine Health and Safety Act. That law provided a number of important protections for underground coal miners including limits on dust exposure and establishment of a medical program called the Coal Workers Health Surveillance Program. This health monitoring program is operated by NIOSH, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health in Morgantown, West Virginia. Miners who participate in the program receive health evaluations once every five years at no cost to themselves. Chest x-rays can detect the early signs and changes in coal workers' pneumoconiosis, commonly called black lung disease, often before the miner is aware of any lung problems. In the 25 years since the Coal Mine Health and Safety Act became law, the proportion of miners with black lung disease has gone down by about 90 percent. But the downward trend of this disease in coal miners has stopped. In the last 10 years, the rates of black lung cases have almost doubled. Currently about 42,000 men and women are working in our nation's underground coal mines. Of course the mining and production of coal is an important component of our national economy. Unfortunately in the last decade over 10,000 of these miners have died of coal workers pneumoconiosis or what is commonly called black lung disease. It's an undeniable fact that many current underground miners are developing severe and advanced cases of black lung disease. As we continue to mine coal, it is important for us to better understand how to protect our miners from this deadly and devastating disease. You're about to hear from two men, both of whom developed severe cases of black lung in their 50s. You'll see that black lung is not confined to old age. In fact, we're seeing cases now in men as young as in their 30s. These men want to share their stories with you. It is our hope that by seeing how black lung changed their lives, you can prevent it from affecting yours. My name is Chester Fike. I'm 55 years old. My dad was a coal miner. He made a good living for our family. And that probably interested me to get into the coal mines more than anything else. And uh, I wanted to make a good living for my family, so to provide for them as much as I possibly could. And I've been a coal miner for 35 years. In 24 years, I've been a c continuous miner operator. I've done a few years of dead work, out by work, but most of us have been continuous miner worker. And my family, is the most important part to me. And 20-some uh, years ago, I figured out that I had black lung. And that made a big impact on my family, my friends. And today now, I can't do what I used to do. My hobbies, hunting, and I like, we, we raise Christmas trees, and I can't do what I did. And, and probably another year, I'm probably not going to be able to do that. I was first, first informed by NIOSH through their program that I had black lung. And from then on, you know, I've been getting doctor's help. It's progressive black lung. And if it don't stop in the next year, he's going to put me on a waiting list for a, black, for a lung. And uh, 
it's about a year and a half waiting list and we're hoping that it'll level out before the year's over with, but if it don't, we'll be waiting for long. The company I worked for uh, was real, real good about my Part 90. They brought me to the outside, and they didn't, you know, they could have given me a lot of trouble or even tried to get rid of me, you know, but they brought me to the surface, and that's where I'm at today. It's starting to have a big impact on my life because it's hard for me to even take a walk with my family, you know, let alone doing any exercise. And each day it's getting tougher to work at the job, to, to get my job done. And what I fear about most is my family, what they're going to be, you know, four or five years down the road, what it's going to be like for them. My first 10 or 15 years, that's probably where I got in trouble. I thought I was invincible. I thought there was nothing that could stop me. And that's, that's where you need to catch the younger generation, the first 10, 15 years. Yeah. It's not good. And I, if, if it can just get out to the younger generation, if we can just help one person, it sure would be worth it. I was a coal miner for 28 years. My coal mining started when I was 1971. And the reason was I got out of the Army. I'd been in the Army three years. And uh, the government was paying half of our salary at the time. And we could, uh, the companies was hiring. My first experience at really, uh, getting a clean mines to work at was a, I worked at a mines on top of a mountain, what they call Hilltop Mountain Mining. It's not much cover over it, but it's mineable. It was 10 foot high. The miner had a big scrubber on it, and it worked very, very good. Very good. That job didn't last, though. That's six weeks. And they transferred me to a, it was their other mines, which was only 28 inches high. And that's where my troubles, I guess, at the end of my career really built up on me, was that uh, the, the 28 inches was mineable with the miner that I was operating. It had a 28 inch head on it. But the other equipment, uh, power center and the, the uh, pin, pin up machine and uh, had to have clearance. So that's when we started cutting 10 inches of rock. I never thought about the x-rays. I never thought about uh, taking care of myself. It was uh, taking care of the family is the big, is the big job. We had to take uh, physicals for the mines for insurance purposes. And that's after 26 years, I actually found out that I had severe uh, silicosis and black lung. The lungs has uh, wore my heart out. And uh, I've uh, got congestive heart failure, and uh, the one side is good, but the other side is where my battle's at. Now I'm battling two diseases, and it's 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 really it's rough. The impact that it had on my family is it's been devastating. I don't get to travel. I don't get to play with the grandkids. I don't be, get to be with my son and my daughter the way I want to be uh, on trips and, and what have you with the family and family outings. It's hard to go to a family reunion when you're sitting there with a tank of oxygen and, and ain't nobody wanting to talk to you because they know you can't talk. You run out of oxygen pretty fast. Uh, my advice to all young sisters and brothers that's going into coal mining, 
Take care of yourself. Once a year, x-rays and follow them up. And when you get to they tell you it's bad, just get out. And uh, that's just the way life is. You you got to take care of yourself. And uh, I'm just 58. And this is this is the way it is. And it's going to be until something happens. Think about your family. Think about the 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 things you want to do. And always remember. What's on your face, you can wash off. But what's on your lungs, you can't. And that's, that's the number one thing. So be safe and take care of yourself. With the support of MSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, NIOSH is helping to protect coal miners from this devastating black lung disease by operating a mobile health screening program. This mobile unit is traveling to mining regions around the United States. Miners are notified in advance about the specific locations where the mobile unit will be stationed and are encouraged to make appointments to participate in the health screening process. These programs protect the health of the miners only if they participate. Miners can only develop black lung disease if they breathe in too much dust. Each miner needs to work to minimize their exposure to dust. Coal operators are required under the law to adhere to the dust standards. Today's mining industry has the necessary tools to control respirable dust. If each miner insists that effective dust controls are conscientiously applied and dust levels are accurately monitored, we will be one step closer to a time when miners and their families will no longer have to suffer the crippling effects of black lung disease. Black lung can be stopped, but this will only happen when every person who works in the coal industry subscribes to the goal of the Coal Mine Health and Safety Act. The first priority and concern of all in the coal mining industry must be the health and safety of its most precious resource, the miner. My advice to all young sisters and brothers that's going into coal mining Take care of yourself. Once a year, x-rays and follow them up. And always remember, what's on your face you can wash off, but what's on your lungs you can't.